Right, in this video, we're going to be uh, looking at capacitors and a property of capacitors called capacitance. A capacitor is constructed of two metallic plates that are separated by an insulating material called an electrolyte. Often, the two plates and the electrolyte are rolled up, so the capacitor has a cylindrical shape. Smaller capacitors don't need to have their plates rolled up, and this gives them a disc-like appearance. The circuit symbol for a capacitor is drawn as two parallel lines representing the metal plates and the gap in between them represents the electrolyte. The charge can be put onto the plate by creating a potential difference between the two plates. So here, if I put a cell over there, there we create a potential difference between the bottom plate and the top plate. The top plate will become positively charged because it's connected to the po positive side of the battery and the bottom plate will become negatively charged because it's connected to the negative side of the battery. In reality, what, what happens in the circuit is the negative electrons on the top plate are drawn through the circuit and down onto the bottom plate. So leaving positive charge on the top plate and collecting the negative charge on the bottom plate. One last point to notice is the amount of charge stored on the bottom plate is equal to the amount of charge that's stored on the top plate. They've just got the opposite sign. Once the capacitor has got the charge on the different plates, then the current will stop. If I want to put more charge onto the plates, what I need to do is uh, increase the potential difference between the plates. So if I double the potential difference, I'm going to double the amount of charge uh, I'm getting on the plates. So doubling the potential difference will double the amount of charge that's put on the plates. And once again, once the charge has got onto the plates, then the current, the flow of the charge, that will stop. So if I double the potential difference, I double the amount of charge. So what we can see is the charge that's stored on the plates is going to be proportional to the potential difference. Knowing this, the charge is proportional to the potential difference, so therefore the charge will equal some constant C times V, and that constant there is what we call the capacitance of the capacitor. So if we look at and use this equation, we can get a definition for the capacitance of a capacitor. So we know that the amount of charge stored on the capacitor is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the potential difference over the capacitor. So if we rearrange this to say that the capacitance is equal to the amount of charge stored on the capacitor divided by the potential difference uh, over the capacitor, we can use this uh, to define the capacitance. So what we would say is that the capacitance is the charge stored on the capacitor per unit of potential difference. The next step that we need to consider is the units for capacitance. So if I just give, give ourselves a little bit more space, we know that the capacitance is equal to the charge per unit of potential difference. And if we look at the SI units that we're dealing with here, the SI unit of charge is the coulomb. The SI unit of the volt, sorry, the, is the volt if potential difference is volt. And the SI unit of capacitance is, so it's the farad, named after Michael Faraday. So because it's named after somebody, it's a capital letter, so capital F. So what we can say is, that one farad of capacitance is
is equal to one coulomb of charge per volt of potential difference. So one F is equal to one coulomb per volt. And there we have the definition of the farad. So a farad as a unit of capacitance is actually quite a large unit. So when you get capacitors, they often are printed in microfarads or nanofarads or even going down to picofarads. Uh, you've got to remember the values of these prefixes. So micro is equal to 10 to the minus 6 and nano is 10 to the minus 9 and pico is equal to 10 to the minus 12.